Hey everybody, I'm APH and welcome to Zombie Cure Lab. Now, huge shout out and thank you to the developers for sending over a copy for me to review for you guys today. So let's get going. Now, this game takes place in Northern Canada and unlike your traditional zombie game, instead of killing off your zombie, we are gonna freeze them in order to capture them. In the current build of the game, there's about five different modes that we can play on, including a tutorial and anywhere from very easy to difficult. There's there's also a sandbox mode which gives you all the resources you need in order to experience the game on pretty much a free play mode. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the normal expedition and while we're on the over map there is a lab. This is the moose lab which is what we'll be trading with. There's a couple ways of trading. One is the overworld, this current map, and another which I'll show you in just a moment. So without further ado you can name your lab but let's get started. First thing that we need to do is put down our starting base. Now, there's a few things that we need to look at on the map. First is there are tunnels. These tunnels represent where the zombies come from. The next is strategic resources. Now starting off, we don't have any technology research, which means that there are some must. One of them is being near berries as berries are needed for research. The other is trees and stones and possibly iron in order to get to pretty much all the things that we need in order to build our base. Taking a quick look, this area up here had some stones I believe I had some berries yeah we've got some berries back there uh, not a whole lot of clear area to build which is a little bit of a bummer I do want a little bit of a clear area we do have some berries over here and probably close enough maybe we go right here and we just do the hike to get the berries I think that's probably the best thing the next thing that we need to do once we place down our base is place down a helicopter pad to bring in all of our needed goods and I'm just going to throw that right there now it does take a minute for all the goods to come in and the start Starting goods is 15 scientists. Our scientists need some things to get started and the first thing they need is a kitchen and that is just a place for them to eat at. Now in the tutorial it recommends a 10 by 10 and you can really go any size that you need but you need to keep in mind of a few things. The first is you need to start with a dining table and this is just a place where your people can eat. But once you start capturing your zombies, you need to have a feed pile. As we don't have any zombies at the moment, I don't think we need to worry about that quite yet, but we are gonna go ahead and throw a door on there so they can enter there. We're going to hold out on building the second building until we have a gate so we can go out and get some resources. So let's go ahead and throw the gate up second. We'll throw it down here. Since we've got our rocks, we've got our berries and our trees down here, I think that would be a good place. And then we're gonna do a resource gathering site. It's a resource camp in this game. And then we're gonna do it right outside the gate. Now, the nice thing about this is you can move it in time, but for right now, we'll just throw it right there. And then we're gonna place a hauling post right next to it. So right there, you can rotate them with R and you can rotate the map with Q and E which I appreciate. And then all movements, I do with W, A, S, and D. And I believe there is side scrolling, but I do have the game in windowed mode. It is a possibility that that might be disabled. I do want the gate built first. So let's go ahead and hit this as a high priority. We can also do that through the priority tool down here and do a large area, something that is very nice. I like it when they give us the ability to highlight huge areas as build areas. Next thing that we're going to need is a lab in order to get a little bit of research. They recommend building a big lab, but for right now, I'm just going to build a little lab. I'm going to do something about like this. And all I want to do here is just place a research desk. And so I could place a few of them if I wanted, but for right now, I just want one. And then we'll throw a door down here for them to get in. And then this area right here looks like a really good spot to place a bedroom. And so we'll place another 10 by 10 there and we'll throw another door down here. This, we're going to place all of our beds. Unfortunately, this game believes in big bunkers and that was all rotated around. Let's go ahead and move that and we'll place it that way. Maybe, maybe not. Let's try this again. Let's just delete that out and we'll try placing that again. So we'll place one there, <laughs> there, and there. I don't know why it rotated those ones around. I guess what we could do is place these ones the other way if it doesn't want to place the ones the way I wanted them. And then we need a couch to give them a little bit of comfort. Now, this will give us a little bit of room in the future in order to do a little bit of expanded if we need more beds and to place an extra couch if needed but for right now 
this is plenty big. We could probably go a little bit smaller just to save some resources. What I want to do for the moment is I only want the hauling post just to be picking up. So I'm just going to clear out all their job priorities. And these guys, I just want them cutting. So we'll just do that. And I do not want them getting stone at the moment as wood and berries is the main priority. So that's just going to be, yeah, we'll just clear out everything just to make sure except for wooden berries. That way we can get a little bit of a supply there. Now, as a temporary fix, we can do some trading. So as I said, you can trade via this little icon down here or by going to the world map via the icon, the little world icon or F4, we can go to the moose lab and we can do a little bit of trading. First thing I want is at least a little bit of wood. And as I do so, you can see it went from 180 minutes to 250, adding on a little bit of stone and a little bit of berries. You can see it goes from 180 to 270. So the longer or the bigger the load, the, the longer it takes. And you can see that something stone is smaller than things like wooden berries. So we go ahead and hit the send and it's going to take a little bit of time to get to us. And that's going to give us all the supplies we need to get started. And as all those supplies come in, we should talk about our people. Now we can designate and this is something we're going to want to do, whether we just have them work in the morning by unselecting the day shift or work just at night by selecting just the night shift. We can also set a higher priority. And if we take a look down here, we can see we have 15 humans. Right now, we have four people that are available to work and they are designated as day shift, night shift, or day and night. So they're willing to work either is what these guys are willing to work. In order to capture our zombies, we are going to need some defenses and those defenses as of right now, we need some snowball launchers and they are going to focus on the gate. So we're going to do three snowball launchers right there. I don't care if that is a high priority because the first night we have no zombies. And as of right now, it doesn't even give us an estimate as to how many zombies we are going to get in that first attack. If I had to guess, it's going to be somewhere around eight to 10. These guys, you can see that they've got a little plug icon. That means that they need power. So let's go ahead and grab a power line. And I was hoping... Maybe I can get it. Nah, it's like one out of it. Maybe what we'll do is, you know what? I, I don't want to do that. I, I'll, I'll place the second uh, little PowerPoint there. I was going to say, let's move these back a little bit, but the closer they are to the gate, the further their range, because they do have a limited range. So if we take a look, it's effective range 270, which means that eventually we will want to take a look at expanding out to having not only more, but having better ones, which brings us to research. Now, the first research we need to get is under production, which is the ice pack production which is the bellow breezer which takes 50 research but then after that we may want to look at something like the snowball shooter 2 which moves the effective range from 247 to 250 and it does more damage per shot so the snowball shooter 1 does 5 this one does 12 and so it's something that's a little bit better it looks like the cooldown is the same but for some reason I felt like it shot faster and that might just be the fact that it actually doesn't shoot faster but it just does more damage and you, you can see it these currently do not have ice now to get ice out there we either need to have a transport out there or we need to have these guys work during the day and set them up so they do a little bit of transporting so for right now i'm gonna go ahead and move their overtime down to usual load and i do have to do this on all of them and this is something we're gonna do pretty much across the board and for right now i'm gonna go ahead and tell them to work at day in order to fill those up I want resources off the bat because we have to beat the zombies. So I'm going to go ahead and move all of my work buildings to 60% just so they work a little bit longer before they go take their break. The main storage, we probably don't need this many builders. And I do want some builders focused at night and just doing repairs. And then the ones during the day, they can do repairs and building. And I wish there was a way to do a priority saying, I want you to do repairs over building, but I think think that like RimWorld, your pawns kind of just do what they feel like doing and they do it semi in the order of which 
you place them, but it seems like they prioritize building over things like repairing. You do have the option to set a area to be repaired and you can set like a big area. Now granted, we don't have any damage at the moment. You can also set an auto repair. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this from the 70 it was at the 90 and this will automatically repair anything that's damaged below 90%. These guys are not currently refilling. I'm gonna go ahead and tell them to refill. And as soon as they're full, I'm gonna go ahead and knock them off the day shift because eventually what we'll want is a hauling post that does our refilling. Part of the reason that we want a hauling post doing our, our refilling is as soon as we get to the tier two hauling post, you can see that the carrying capacity is greater. Uh, so the carrying capacity of the hauling post is two times the hauling post two is three times, five times for the next one after that, and eight times the final version. I have to say, like being able to haul eight times as much by using a hauling post is phenomenal. It's why as these guys are doing all this cutting down, these guys are keeping up with it because they these three are potentially able to do quite a bit more than these guys. As I said, resources are pretty important. So let's go ahead and hire up two more people that are doing the same thing, just harvesting so that we can try to get at least these berries up and done before the next run and probably get a little bit more wood as this is pretty much ready. Research is our next thing. So I'm going to go ahead and let time advance a little bit until we have enough research to unlock the bellows. All right, we just hit our 50 the research so we're going to go ahead and unlock the below uh breezing and basically this is a way of turning things into ice by some uh, magic using a bellow this game very much reminds me of theme hospital or maybe even two point hospital back in the day they do need a little bit of work room to get to them so i'm going to go ahead and add this like this you know what let's go ahead and turn these around so we'll have them facing the other direction maybe we just need to delete these out and rebuild them the direction i want the face so we'll do something a little bit like this that way the exit is pointing out the way that we want it to be as i'm not sure if they take it to the storage or if they take it directly to there now these guys for the moment as there's no zombies this night i'm going to go ahead and tell him to build and then after tonight i'm going to go ahead and unselect that again now we're going to want to pretty much pe put people in here all the time and currently we have one day shift and two night shift people we are going to set our conditions i'm going to set this to day shift i'm going to go ahead and add in a person i'm going to set this to night shift and i'm going to go ahead and add in a person that way we have somebody all the time for these until i go ahead and remove a person probably from the resource camp as we're starting to pull in some good resources i'm just gonna leave these two alone primary objective is to get enough ice so we get the next zombie night which looks like we're gonna get six it's not a big deal and now we're pretty much set up for the first zombie night so i'm gonna go ahead and let time play out i'm gonna let these guys collect some resources then i'll bring you guys back right about zombie time now as the first zombie night approaches there's some final things we need to do in order to get ready for the zombies the first is over in the kitchen we need to add in our feed pile the next thing that we want to do with that is get a meat cultivator in order to grow the meat we want to feed our zombies so we're going to go ahead and throw that right there this building is powered so we're going to go ahead and throw a power line over here we can place the power line within the building i think it looks a little goofy but we can do that the next thing that we need to do is place a zombie cure facility in this facility i want it to be relatively near the door over here and the facility itself is four by six so we're gonna go with something a little bit bigger than four by six we'll go i would say probably five by seven maybe we'll go a little bit bigger maybe we'll go with six by eight we'll go right here let's go ahead and throw that there let's throw a door on this side and the treatment chamber right here and then this building is also powered so we're gonna go ahead and throw a power line i'm gonna do this one right here and hopefully that reaches far enough now i might be able to get rid of this power pole as this one will take up its space so you know what we'll do is we'll move this one over here that way we don't have two poles there the next thing is we don't want our people outside during the zombie attack so i'm gonna go ahead and take these guys off night duty so that they come in and as we're about to hit night i'm gonna hit the lockdown button and this is gonna force everybody within the walls 
So you can see them kind of running scared. Some of them are like, ooh, food. And some of them are thinking of work and other things. But as soon as they get inside, they're like, it's us, we're, we're not zombies. Let's go ahead and lock that gate so nobody goes out. Let's take the lockdown. And our zombies are approaching. Now they are approaching from the tunnel closest, which is nice. They are immediately going into our snowball launchers. Now they have no power. That's not good. Uh, we've got to get a priority on, I thought they were going to I prioritized that by moving it, but they did not. So let's get a couple of night people that are just going to build real quick so that we can get our power back. And with that priority, hopefully they power up that pole real quick. Otherwise, this is going to be an interesting night as we have no defenses. Ah, there we go. And these guys, we can now have them just during the night. As I don't want them walking away to get any of their goods, I'm going to take them off of refilling. And what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and put a transport nearby and and we're just gonna have this transport as filling up all of the goods. So we're gonna place this, I'm gonna say right behind this power pole. And they are starting to get this built, which is amazing because we do want to capture these. We want to cure them and we wanna make them our workers, which expands out our workforce. Now, there is a disadvantage of having a big workforce. If you take a look at the zombie threat level as they're cure, well, as they're freezing all of these, we can see the level is based off of the size of our lab so the bigger we build the more the threat the amount of humans and the amount of humbies that we have also you're going to notice that as we are day two the duration is marked as 0.15 for the threat so the longer we go the more we get for mission duration threat level so in uh, nature we automatically have a scaling threat all right let's go ahead and unlock now that they have froze these zombies they're just about to finish this and then we will complete our first objective to treat our first level one humby this guy is ready in this one we just want one person we just want them to work at night and all i want them to do is refill and i just want them to refill these snowball launchers now i'm not sure if they need to get out to this resource camp to do so as i do see occasionally where yeah they just brought snowballs out there as i'm seeing occasionally they do take things to that and to the, instead of to the store pile now this area is pretty clear and berries are a pretty big concern so i'm going to go ahead and move this over here and i'm going to go ahead and move this hauling post with it so we'll go something like that uh, we are day three and today we just have weak zombies now taking a quick look looks like we need steel in order to make this happen so once this resource camp builds we're gonna have to see how much steel we have available and i want them to focus on getting that steel and it's looking like this uh tent has some steel and some ice packs and this transformer has some different steel as well and we are are lacking in some people we are not lacking in people that's really weird that it shows oh you know what i have to select what they're going to get that was me being me so we're going to focus on the electronics we're going to focus on the metal probably grab that ice just because ice is good and we might have to move it a little closer to this billboard to get that last little bit before we tell them to get all these berries now the nice thing about this area is we also have wild vegetables which is our food source and talking about wild vegetables let's bring in another load in this one i want to bring in some vegetables some more berries we'll get a little bit more wood and we'll get some stone we don't have a whole lot of metal so i can't really do that at the moment but we can bring in some ice so we'll do something that looks like you know what let's bring in some meat something that looks like that for our first load and we are waiting on metal yeah we're waiting on metal this is not good if we don't get that metal in time these guys are gonna thaw if we take a look you can see that there's a water kind of condensing around them and slowly they're thawing out and once they thaw they become regular zombies again and they kind of run back as it's the middle of the day let's move this a little closer to that billboard and we'll go ahead and hit the priority on that so that they move it like right meow and this camp will still be within range so it's still good and then once we get that 
that billboard all cut down. Then we're going to go ahead and shift over to berries and vegetables so we get a little bit better food. A little bit behind the, the eight ball there is I should have looked at the metal and requirements before. And it looks like, yeah, look at that. Our treatment center is ready. I do want these guys working during the day. So I'm going to go ahead and hire up two people during the day. They got to fill it up. And the treatment center, I don't really think I have anybody else available to work so I could go ahead and take a couple people off of the builder and it looks like they are all night workers which is a little bit of a bummer but yeah look at that they are starting to haul them in and they put them in this oh and we caught the helicopter right as we we're doing it and I don't know what type of magic they're doing but that zombie does not look like he's having a good time and he comes out and we get a, a eureka we've cured our first zombie and he comes out plops a thing on his head and off to work he goes now there are certain jobs he can do and certain jobs he can't so we can place him in a hauling post but if we take a look here we can only place humans and tier three into the shooting post now over here it looks like he's willing to work any time so let's go ahead and hire him up over here and again i just want him refilling at the moment so he can refill everything and we'll go ahead and take our person off of there we might want to have him transporting the frozen that way our people over here can keep working unfortunately it looks like we're only going to get maybe one more and it looks like we got a total of two this night which is a little bit of a, a bummer i was hoping we'd get a few more Go ahead and set these guys on to getting berries and carrots. This is Zombie Cure Lab. And again, I want to say a huge shout out and a huge thank yous for the, to the devs for sending over a copy. And this is a game that I can see myself playing on the channel, not only as a live stream, I think it would be fun as a live stream, but as a series. There are a few things that I would like to see in the future, one of which is the ability to name our researchers and name our, our Humbies once we have captured them. Other than that, I really think this is a solid game. I I have high hopes for this being a roguelike theme hospital design of game. So thank you guys for joining and we will see you in the next episode.